since we're talking about time, this month is a temporal subfield. Does everybody know what a subfield is? Someone else's problem. So anything that you run into this month, it's not your fault. It's somebody else's problem. <laughs> Sorry, Douglas Adams is awesome. Subfield is just one of the best inventions there ever has been. <laughs> All right, um, date. So, do something, right? No? Donuts talk. <laughs> so let me give it to you in English, <laughs> right? <laughs> so uh, I keep most of my systems in. I set up a, a German environment. Uh, so I, I thought, you know, this is always a good thing to remind people. There's easy ways to uh, uh, adjust that environment, the language environment, and other environmental variables. One is you can just throw it on the command line in front of the command you're running. So I'm here, I'm setting the lang variable to English US, uh, and then I'm calling date, and it's all on the same command line. So that means I'm not actually changing the variable for my shell. All I'm doing is changing it for that particular command. Um, but <laughs> since I wanted the rest of the examples to be in English, I went, through it, went ahead and, and uh, set it for the shell uh, and I also changed PS1 so we'd get a, you know, something that was useful for slides um, so that it would be English for the rest of the presentation. Um, but I also hopped around a lot in different shells and screen and stuff. So if something shows up in Swahili, sorry, I didn't, don't know how it happened, but might have. Anyway, so we'll go back a little bit, talk about the time. It gives the, by default, it'll give us a full, full amount of information about uh, what day it is, what time, what uh, uh, day of the week. Uh, year, time zone. Uh, you'll get different formats depending on what you got. So let me go back to the German format. It's a slightly different format than we got for English. I'll cover those a little bit. Um, but you can also set the format you want. So you use a plus symbol and then percent and then some kind of marker to tell us what we want. So capital Y says give me a four digit year. Uh, cap, or, uh, lowercase m says give me the abbreviation for the month in my local language. So here we go. And then uh, lowercase d is the day of the month. Uh, and this is also zero padded. So 01 and 02 and still just a 1 and 2 and so forth. Uh, so this gives you a, a string, gives you all the information. Um, and it's fairly, fairly easy to read going through there. Uh, now we can also do s for string, no. Seconds, so it's the number of seconds since the beginning of time. We'll get to what the beginning of time is in a little bit. Um, so this is, but this is a number. The nice thing about being able to get just a plain integer is we can do math. Oh, excuse me. I got my examples out of order, in my head anyway. <laughs> um, so uh, here I can also, I, I can, so that's what I forgot. So this gives us a string. I can then use that string with a dash D and an at. This is the thing that's not, that wasn't in the man page for like 10 years. So it was always a pain to remember what it was. It's in the info page, but for those of us that don't Emacs, it didn't help. All right, so if you say at and then give it a, uh, a number, it will try to do that as the number of seconds since the epoch. So I can give it a, give it a number and it'll give me the date for that. So now, since I know this is, this is a number, I can do math on it, right? So I can take the date string, percent %s, and I can minus 3600, which is, come on, where's Jeff Foxworthy? What things a fifth grader would know? <laughs> 3600, number of seconds in an hour, right? So I'm subtracting an hour and finding out what time it was an hour ago when I wrote this, ran this command. Not an hour now, because I'm not running it now, right? But, <laughs> but if you'll notice, September 12th, 1739. And then I can do 24 times 3600. So I can now subtract a day. So now I get the 11th instead of the 12th, right? Seven times 24 times 3600. I can subtract a week, right? So now I'm getting last Thursday instead of this Thursday, today Thursday. But, you know. I can also say last week. So I can give it some, either some English time frames that, that date understands. I can give it next week. What's happening this time next week? We all have just learned about DNS 
yes. Our security meeting will, will probably be in, in the midst of wrapping up about this time next week, right? So I can also say next Thursday, but something changed. So 1739 to zero, right? So it went to when I do a next something, it's going to go to the beginning of the day instead of exactly whatever from now, right? So, so next week was seven days from right now, or when, right when I wrote that, ran that command. But next whatever went to the beginning of the day on that. In the time zone I, I'm in, right? So it's 0000 MST, not another time zone. We'll talk about time zones in a bit, like this one. So UTC, what, time, what is UTC? Universal. Coordinated universal time. So because it makes sense, coordinated universal time would be UTC, right? Uh, I think UTC is, the, uh, is from the French version of it, right? Universal coordinated time is our time coordinated, how you want to do that. Um, time in, it's the time in England, generally, right? GMT, yeah. Yep. So well, not quite. We'll get to that, right? Not quite. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. So I mentioned the epoch, the beginning of time, right? So if I tell it, here's the number of seconds since the epoch, and I say zero, we can find out when time began, right? So Calvin Hobbes told us, you know, why all the all the pictures were in black and white because we hadn't invented color yet, right? So well, here we know that you know before January first, nineteen seventy, time didn't actually exist. People are just confused. I don't know, right? So, but this is this is the beginning of time for Unix systems, POSIX based systems. We have a problem coming up. We'll talk about that in a bit. But I can also set different time zones. So here is for Berlin. And since he's not paying attention, <laughs> so Mumbai. Right? So we can choose different parts of the world. Now, not everything has a time zone, right? You can't ch choose uh, 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 Sedona as a, as a place for a time zone. We do have Phoenix, but we don't have Sedona. We don't have, you know, two guns and a bunch of other places, right? Uh, I don't even think Flagstaffs exist in there, but we've got stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll talk more about time zones in a second. Now, I could also specify a date string that it understands. So I've been using the time since the epoch, the number of seconds since the epoch. But I can also use a date string. So here I'm saying June 1st this year. And then add 30 days. Right? It gives me 30 days later. The problem with that, depending on what you're wanting, is not every month has the same number of days, right? right. So if you were trying to say, hey, I have this month that I got somewhere and I want to find out when the next month is, you can't just add 30 days because it might not, might not work out. So we can add a month. And then date will do the math for us. So we don't have to figure it out, right? Which is nice. By the way, this is, a lot of this is in libc. Websites started figuring this out. And you can no longer, for the most part, choose February 30th on an odd year as your birth date. Ah, up until about five or six years ago, you could still do that all the time. <laughs> They started doing, you know, they started discovering the tools that we've had for decades. It's like, oh, you guys. All right. Anyway, um, so you can choose here, and it'll, 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 by using the month, the week, etc., it will do the things for us, right? And it'll, including date wrap, you know, month wrapping. So here, um, we, when I said February plus a month, it gave me March, and it took care of the 28 days versus 38, 31 days, etc., including it's 19, so there's no leap year that, that in, in 19. But if it was a year with a leap year, it would also take care of that for you as well. Uh, and the occasional leap second and leap nanoseconds, you know, so we don't have to worry about this. Uh, we can choose a fortnight. I know there's at least one person here who knows what a fortnight is. I don't know if the rest of us do. <laughs> I'm betting he's got a poem with it in there. All right. You can also do some funky math with, your, with the, the worded word versions. So this is saying, take the date two years from now, but a year before that. Right? So I could also say, so this is you know, basically saying one year from now, or from when I ran, ran the command. 
But I could say plus two years, minus three months, things like that, right? A couple hours or whatever. You can go back and forth. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of it, and you know, it gets complex. Um, but again, date will go through and, and, and convert those and, and get you to the right place. Uh, cool feature that I did not know about until I was writing this presentation. <laughs> it's got a debug mode. <laughs> I want to play more with this. I, had a, I did the dot, dot, dot because debug for, for this particular one got kind of long and too much for a, for a, for a uh, slide. Um, so it'll tell you how it's coming up with the answer it's giving you, which is really, really cool. So anyway, um, so if you want to, if you're, especially if you're trying to use date and you're not getting the results you want, you got a better chance, you know, better chance of being able to figure it out rather than just try random stuff until it works. And we'll get to random stuff in a second, too. Oh, we're there. <laughs> so random is a special variable in the shell, which will give you a number between 0 and 32, something. I don't remember what it is. Uh, anyway, this is string, uh, uh, a uh, uh, command I came up with a couple years ago to get random birth dates. So again, places that want to have birth dates, you can't just choose February 30th anymore. So I needed to come up with something else to give them misinformation. Uh, so I wrote a command that'll just give me a general random birth date. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is, goes from the 1920s uh, until the late 90s. Uh, you don't want to go any further than the late 90s, and everybody thinks you're underage, and you start running into problems for stuff, you know. Uh, so uh, 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 you can do that. Uh, and I give you a couple examples so you can see we're getting different results every time I run it. Uh, now. I mentioned different time zones. Uh, most of the world, twice a year, gets confused about what time it is. Uh, and they do this thing, daylight savings time, where they switch an hour one way or the other way. I forget. Fall forward, spring back, or just, I don't know. And, and just to make it more fun, they do it at different time, you know, different dates, depending on where in the world you are. So like, I have to pay attention to where, when the US is doing it. And I've done this during scale a couple times. And so I wake up the next day, and it's a different time, right? Uh, and, but in Europe, they do it at a different time of year. So if I'm trying to coordinate people between the US and in Germany, they're getting confused about what time it is at different times. And I have to do this multiple times, right? So uh, luckily, we don't do that here in Arizona, right? Mostly. All right, back to date, universal, UTC. I mentioned this is London time, but not quite. So notice that. It was 0149, but your uh, London was actually 249. UTC, and I think Pavlos will mention the one to mention GMT earlier. Neither one of those has a daylight savings time. So you have BST, you got Beast. Yes, we'll get to that. So London is currently off an hour from UTC. I know it's the local time, and they're off an hour. It's got to be. They probably got extra U's in there too. All right. Uh, so we can also specify, we, we meant BST, British Standard Time, we can speci specify EST, Eastern Standard Time, right? IST, what's that? You'd think, maybe, I think in this case I get Ireland, because it's close to London when I, when I ran it, right? We, we don't know. Same thing. There's, there's more than one EST as well. We, we think of it here because there's a lot of people over there, right? And they're on the coast that doesn't fall in the ocean. They just get big waves, right? So we think of them because they're in the news, but there are other ESTs. I don't know what e Estonia calls their local time, right? So you got to be careful what you're choosing for your time zone. That's why if you're wanting to be certain, it's better to, to figure out where a city is in the time zone you want and do that. It would be nice if we had some better ways of doing that. So UTC. UTC is not actually time zone. It's a standard. For most of us that are not like date geeks, right? If you're working on NTP, this matters. For the rest of us, no, not really. But it is a, it's a standard as opposed to time. GMT is the, is the time zone. As I say, neither one of them does daylight savings time. So GMT is always there. It doesn't do the offset. In England, they do BST, the British summertime. Uh, Arizona is UTC minus 7, GMT minus 7. So uh, whatever, you know, again, we're, they're, they, those two don't change time zone. We don't change time zone. It works out, right? We can just do minus 7. We're, we're always there. Um, 
But all of Arizona? No. no. no yes. So we'll, we'll get to that, and we'll get down to it in a second. So here's some specific ways of, of tracking different parts of the country. So we can choose New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles for the three uh, time zones in continental US that are the primary time zones. We've got Phoenix for us. But the Navajo Nation crosses multiple states, and they decided that they should be the same time in all of their different places. So they chose to go basically with New Mexico time, and, and, and they do daylight savings time. Um, but <laughs> just for fun, the Hopi Nation is entirely within the Navajo Nation, within, the United, within Arizona, and they don't do DSD. So you can cross multiple time zones, and it's a beautiful drive. Uh, it's, uh, we, just, we did that last year. It is a gorgeous drive. It's fantastic. But yeah, you can get confused about what time it is pretty easily up there. Uh, and uh, I know of uh, somebody here that has, you know, somebody with personal experience with trying to do uh, meetings in, in the Navajo Nation up with OPs and, and uh, yeah, it gets to be fun. All right. Uh, now we can go through and, and use date inside of other commands. So here I've got, uh, for the, by, by the way, back ticks are evil. Don't use them, right? So I've got my dollar print mechanism for, for substi command substitution. So I'm taking echo out a string, so print out a string, and then I'm saying run date and give me this particular output. So I wanted to show the difference between the, the uh, 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 abbreviation and the full day for Thursday, or for the day, you know, in this case it was a Thursday. And I can put that inside of, the, uh, of another command. Um, so again, I can do that with echo, but we got capital Y for the year. Uh, and then we have other ways of displaying the year that are bugs. For those of you that remind you Y2K, um, granted, you had a chance to make a lot of money on it, but please don't do that again. All right. Uh, so <laughs> I highly encourage always using a full digit year. For those of you that love long enough, five digits when we get there, right? All right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, for time, I also recommend uh, using 24-hour clock because it gets less confusing. Uh, but there are op options for 12-hour clocks and also options for doing AM, PM, up to, up, uppercase, lowercase, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, and we can throw other things in there. So date, and as I said, we'd, you'd per use percent to say, OK, I'm going to have a special character go do something. right? So I've got my, my 24 hour time here at the end of, the, of this particular string. Um, but before that, I've just got regular text. Uh, and then percent %n gives us a backslash n. What's a backslash n in Unix systems? New line, right? So it says go to the next line. And I added just some spaces in there so I could get you know fancy stair stepping, whatever, right? Um, so I can put other stuff. So I, in, in the previous examples, I did echo with date in the middle of it. But since I'm not doing any fa anything fancy with the echo, I could have done it the other way around and just put the text inside the date command. Uh, we can also see the quarter of the year. What quarter is it? You know, I tried to, to figure this out with math at one point, and, and it's much more difficult than it seems like it should be. <laughs> so it's nice that date just takes care of it for me. Uh, the day of the week. So there's two different ways of doing that. 1 through 7, and 0 through 7, whatever. So it depends on if you want to start on a uh, Sunday or a Monday. Uh, the week of the year. Don't tend to use that too much, but there's a couple places where I actually do use that on a, on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, date and time in the local format. So if you're writing a program for somebody else, and I didn't, I, I, I'd forgotten about this because I, I enforce what format people should get, but that's not really good coding, right? So if you're writing a, a program that other people should get, uh, you can use the X and X to, to get the, lo the, the format for their locale. So they get whatever it is that they're prob possibly expecting if they know what their locale is. Okay. I mentioned that the seconds after the epoch, we've got a problem with us. So we're running out of time to figure this out. 
<laughs> so, so at some point we run out of we run out of seconds. <laughs> the number gets too big on a 32-bit system. And this back in Y2K and everything, this was the panic. It was like, oh, in 38 years, Unix is going to run out of time. I'm like, we're not database people. We can fix this, right? And we have. I actually had to search and find a 32-bit system to run this on because all of us, most of us have run the 64-bit systems. 64-bit systems, we got another couple thousand years before we run out of time. We're, we're good for a while, right? Um, so anyway, but, but for those of you that do embedded stuff, and one of the people I'm going to mention isn't here that does embedded stuff, uh, uh, IoT and a lot of other things like that that might be smaller systems, those might have an issue. Um, but if you really think that the cheap IoT stuff that you buy today is still going to be running in 16 years, you probably have more security issues than running you know, a, a time overflow type of issue, right? Yeah, yeah, they need to fix there. Yeah. yeah, so, but it, it, when we say that, and, and uh, I have helped people run, um, uh, shall we say, a non-graphical tool from a proprietary sy system uh, inside of emulators that are still running things that, that in a uh, software that hasn't been available for 15, 20 years now. I don't know how, when the last time they officially sold DOS, right? Um, so yeah, I'll be, uh, Interesting, but on those, especially f for that, you're, you're probably you might be running in an emulator anyway. So, you know, just continue pretending it's a different year. <laughs> uh, speaking of running out of bits, so the number of days, the, the, the number of the day of the year, but tomorrow we have to add an extra bit in order to get there. All right, geek stuff, right? All right, I talked about different date formats. I showed you my preferred format, which is four-digit year, the three-digit uh, uh, three-letter abbreviation in the day. Um, but here's a couple different formats side by side. Can you pick out which one's an actually a date? If you can, which one's the year, the month, and the, and the day, right? But by some of the default things, this is, gets to be difficult to, to look at. And uh, um, you know, this la the last one, one, two, three, you know, well, which one's the one, which one's the two, which one's the three, right? If you don't see the source to figure out where it was coming from, this is, this is why you know, I, 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 I scoff at the Y2K stuff, because it was, it was already prob without running out of days, it w or running out of, of space for the years, it was already a problem. <laughs> it was on, you know, not human readable, it's not human friendly. So we can do better than that. Uh, this ISO standard, by the way, puts dashes in there, so it's easier to pick out the year. So you got 2001-02-03, so it's a little bit easier to pick that up. And of course, they are sane, and they do year, month, day, not this weird stuff where you do around here where it's year, day, month, because doing it all convoluted. This, this isn't weaving. We're not taking things and putting them over the top of each other. <laughs> yes, Sebastian. Um, what, what are the E's in your command for? Uh, the E is to get uh, the day without the padding. I believe. I never use it, so. <laughs> I, had, I knew it was there. I had to look it up in order to figure it out. Yeah. You know? So, all right. Uh, we could also use this to throw uh, timestamps into file names. Right. So it's easy to figure out when your temp file was. Uh, 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 things like that. Uh, so you can, I showed earlier where we can throw the date in, into, the, uh, uh, into something for a command. Uh, we can do that in the command line as well. Right there. Uh, this is something I actually ran into. Uh, so uh, dmessage uh, is useful. And uh, you can see here it gives us uh, the amount of time since you last booted the system. Because that's how you measure time, right, always. You, you take it based on some random event that you don't know when happened <laughs> and take the offset. <laughs> so it's not really legible, right? Um, so here I figured out how to go through. I put some extra echoes in there so we get some vertical space uh, and, and figured out how to go through and uh, pull 
uh, the timestamp out of D, uh, off the DSA message record, pull the timestamp out of uh, proc stat for the approximate boot time. If your system's been up for a while and you've had some uh, uh, um, uh, CPU uh, or you know NTP has gone through an adjusted time for you, you'll get things that are off a little bit. So on a system I was looking up at that has a uh, four-year uptime, I had D message events from two minutes into the future. That's awesome, right? Um, so it's not exact, right? But it's you know it's a lot more readable than 28. Or in the, in the case of the system that's been up for four years, a long string of undecipherable numbers that are obviously not second since epoch, right? Second since oh I'm alive. I don't know. All right. Um, sortable dates. Uh, so again, I talked about you know doing year, month, day, right? So the, with that, you can sort them. Uh, so my system, the, the one of the, the huge drawbacks, the way I like to do it with the with the uh, uh, abbreviation for the month is you can't sort them. Well, you can, but they're just in the wrong order, right? Um, April is shows up at the beginning for some reason and so forth, right? Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, so this way you can go through and sort them. You can also, if you had your dashes in there, you can sort them as well. Um, but I want to do a pure number, so it's kind of easy to see what's going on. Um, all right. Uh, and then some related useful commands. So the cal command will show you a calendar for the, the current month. You can also choose other things. Uh, you can get Gregorian times. It, does, it actually does a pretty good job of remembering when different calendars came into place. Uh, it is, uh, I believe, it's been, you know, it's been 10 years, 15 years since I've looked. Uh, I think it's fairly Eurocentric, but it also took into account where you are to some extent. Um, I don't often do pre-medieval research on the command line, so I, I, I've only occasionally had to go through and, and figure out what it is in Cal. Um, years and years ago, somebody was doing a, a Caesar blog where he was taking the letters of Caesar and the, or she, I don't know who it was, right? And and uh, and then writing like a blog entry about the you know 38th day into this campaign, and then the next day was the 39th day in the campaign. And if there weren't letters for three or four days, there were no blog posts, and then something else. It was pretty awesome, actually. A lot of a lot of work, but it was kind of fun. Uh, anyway, so Cal minus three though shows you this month, last month, and the next month. So it's a really useful uh, output to see where you're going. Uh, TZ select to change your time zone. Yes. Can you do two months into the future with like a plus three? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, because if you give it a year, then it's going to show the whole year. It'll give you the whole year, but I think it's only got the minus three for the for the thing. Yeah. So anyway, yes, and I forgot though to mention that you can also specify a year, and then it'll show you the whole year, which is which is also useful. Uh, and a surprise if I don't tell you. Uh, but it, it's got a few other options. Uh, TZ select so you can change your time zone. Right? If you travel somewhere and you want to change your time zone or you're in a place where you, know, you forgot to tell it that you're going to have daylight savings time, you can fix that and so forth. Uh, some resources. Uh, the, the date man page uh, is rather short and sweet, but it does have all those percent symbols that I was talking about. It's also got the command line options. Um, but if you're really needing to research into the, the date command, uh, go look at the, the info pages. Uh, you probably have them on your computer. If you know how to use Emacs, info pages are awesome for the rest of us. Uh, there's web interface now. <laughs> um, so uh, go look at the, the info pages. Uh, they've got a lot more uh, examples and other pieces in there. Uh, in case you're fascinated about the uh, Y20, uh, 2038 problem and wanted to know more, Wikipedia has an article. Uh, you can go find out more about that. Uh, and then he didn't show up tonight. He was here last month. Uh, so Mitch, uh, one of our, our locals, uh, did a couple of uh, 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 good articles for Linux Journal's uh, site on doing uh, math on the command, uh, date math on the command line. I actually was looking for some examples on how to do some stuff and, and got Got, a, uh, got some help from his, his articles. Um, uh, I also have a link. The second part is a link to his, his list of his articles. Uh, uh, if you want to know. Hmm? They might not be around very long. Though. I know. I say, yeah, go read them quickly because the Linux Journal site could be going away anytime. 
Uh, and, uh, but if you want to know more about command line stuff, uh, Mitch has done some really good articles. Warning, it is a time sink because he's got a lot of really good stuff that he's written he's, and he did it over a number of years. So uh, I avoid that page because three, years, three hours disappear when I go to that page. I, I was like, oh, this, I'll do the, that, the stuff. And I was just setting up the link for the, for, for the slides. And like 45 minutes later, I'm like, oh, I was supposed to be doing something else here. <laughs> but he's in really good, really good articles. Uh, and he's done some really nice stuff over the years. Uh, and as Sean was mentioning, uh, Linux Journal ceased to exist as an organization. And the website is up until it isn't. So um, you know, it's uh, Schrodinger's website, right? Um, user share zone info and TZ select are also resources. Any other uh, questions? No? OK. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>